Well, hello again. Uh, here's a good one. I've really had some fun with this one. The question is, is denial okay? Denial. Well, with, by denial, I'm not talking about, uh, no, officer, I deny that I shot that man. No, I'm not talking about that kind of denial. I'm talking about the Freudian type, the psychological type. Uh, Freud was the first one to get really specific about this. And, and, and the phenomenon is this, a person faced with a fact that is just too threatening to be acceptable, just can't absorb it. They deny that it exists, perhaps despite even overwhelming evidence to, the, to, the, to that effect. Okay, that's denial. Uh, it can take a number of different forms. Uh, it can take, first of all, just denying the fact itself. No, that never happened. Uh, that's just your imagination. Uh, another one is uh, what is sometimes called a minimization. Well, you're right, it did happen, but it was not really no big deal, uh, not important, uh, uh, a lot less uh, than you think. And then another one is uh, transference or projection. Oh yeah, that happened, it was pretty important, uh, but I didn't have anything to do with that, or that was somebody else's fault. Um, so uh, there's a whole variety of mechanisms by which uh, denial is uh, implemented uh, and, uh, and its effects are pretty considerable, the way it's used, and so we'll, we'll go into some of those and we'll examine whether or not some of the uses of denial are, are positive and, and uh, which are negative. I should also comment that denial is uh, quite uh, closely associated with uh, narcissism. Uh, narcissists, narcissists are often in denial themselves. They block out any sort of information or facts which would uh, in any way uh, inhibit their view of themselves, uh, that, that would uh, negate their stature, their image, their <laughs> appearance even. Uh, and of course, uh, you know who comes to mind on this one, uh, the previous President of the United States. and about him uh, more later. Okay, well let's just examine the question itself, is denial okay? So let's take a look at the yes view, that, that those would, uh, would say, um, yes, denial is okay. Uh, first of all, uh, denial, I think most people who study this will acknowledge that there is a circumstance when it's okay. And that's when something so awful happens uh, that uh, the individual question just simply isn't psychologically and emotionally prepared or capable of absorbing the information. So, so they go into uh, a form of uh, denial. That's, that's probably a pretty constructive thing to do. Uh, uh, my wife and I often watch true crime programs, and when uh, the uh, parent is uh, informed by the police that their child has been killed by some monster and they found the body, uh, very often they will say the same thing, no, 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 that, that's, that, that's not my little Harry, that can't be, no, that's not true. So it's right away uh, a person in an extremely stressful situation will go into that kind of defense mechanism mode, a form of denial, which is just to say, which just isn't true, the, f the fact doesn't exist. Uh, so it, it manifests itself often, uh, according to some psychiatrists, in, in a kind of staged form of dealing uh, with the problem. Uh, People often deal with terrible news, uh, with uh, information that they find uh, really unacceptable, uh, perhaps even their own demise, with a staged version where the first thing they do is to deny it, uh, and then they go through a series of other steps winding up eventually with uh, uh, kind of acceptance, you know. Uh, I won't go through all of those, they're not relevant here, but denial can be very much a part of a recognized, valid uh, way of processing just horrible news. Um, 
And then furthermore, a lot of people uh, might well say, who are in that position, wait a minute, it's my body, it's my mind, it's my personality, it's up to me to decide how I'm going to deal with it, it's up to me to decide what I'm going to believe and what I'm not going to believe, nobody's going to tell me otherwise, uh, I'm my own person, so uh, yeah, don't bother me with any of these uh, hocus pocus uh, new age diagnoses, uh, uh, it's just not for me, I'm going to get on with my life as I live it and uh, it's up to you to <laughs> just accept it or go away. So there, there can be a kind of a defiant uh, rationale behind saying it's okay. Okay, well what about those who say no, denial is not okay and I think the basic idea with them is to say this, uh, look, I accept that denial uh, very often is a, an important defense, defense mechanism for keeping you in a, one piece when you've got some awful uh, problem, but to make it permanent is very damaging. Uh, you've got to get through it, you've got to outgrow it, you have to outgrow the need for it, uh, and those that don't, I'm afraid, uh, that's not okay. And it does manifest itself uh, often, for example, with various addictions. Uh, we've all run into these sorts of uh, situations and, and seen this. The alcoholic that says, no, I don't really have a problem. It's not getting in the way of my work. Okay, I have headaches and so forth, but uh, hey, that's part of the fun, uh, hangovers. Um, and. Uh, uh, oh yes, uh, I know that I've had some uh, mm, some illnesses. I know the <laughs> uh, the doctor tells me my liver's not in too great shape. But hey, I enjoy the booze, and and uh, in any case, it's uh, it, it's not preventing me from living a good life. Uh, another one always has been around smoking. Uh, people say, look, I enjoy smoking, uh, and the there's never really been. A persuasive link, a real definite uh, explanation of uh, the uh, theory uh, that smoke, uh, smoking causes cancer. I know, you know, there's some uh, correlation between uh, cancer, lung cancer particularly, and, and smoking, but, but they haven't really uh, uh, proven it. And, and in the meantime, I, I enjoy smoking, so I'm going to continue. And then, of course, there's the classic, which is obesity. Uh, you know, uh, people who use denial with obesity aren't doing themselves any favors when they are in denial. Uh, they will say things like, well, I just come from a large family. Uh, it's in my genes. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, I've uh, grown up in an environment where uh, we love food. We eat quite a lot of it. We love rich food. And uh, I suppose it's possible that may have contributed to my weight, but uh, hey, it's not a problem. And also, by the way, there's no truth to the fact that, that uh, uh, obesity uh, results in greater morbidity, uh, mortality, and disease, and so forth. Uh, that's just something put out by the modeling agencies <laughs> to terrorize young girls. Uh, fat is good, uh, and anyone who criticizes uh, us is, uh, is, is a nasty equivalent of a racist person. And uh, uh, the idea of fat shaming, uh, walking down the street when people shout at me, it just shows how terrible those people are. It's not my fault, it's their fault. So, there are a lot of these kinds of things. Uh, sadly, another example of the denial phenomenon when it comes to self is this business about ignoring ominous medical problems. Uh, gosh, I've seen this quite a few times just with people I've known, people that uh, spot some kind of uh, mm, worrisome anomaly and really don't want to think about what it might mean. It's usually, what we're usually talking about here is cancer. Um, so they 
suspect something, but they, they kind of put off, they justify, they rationalize it's probably something else, uh, and just don't do anything about it, and then finally it's too late. Uh, I saw this with a friend of mine uh, from university with, with prostate cancer. Uh, I know uh, uh, another lady right now who saw all the signs, uh, and she certainly must have been aware of what they meant of bowel cancer, and uh, ignored them, justified them, uh, minimize, said, oh, well, it's really something I ate or spicy food, that, that kind of thing. Totally ignored it and now is in big trouble. Oh, dear. That is such a destructive phenomenon and uh, eventually it only hurts the person who practices it. Uh, furthermore, uh, those examples that I just gave are uh, are those which pertain to the person's damaging oneself. Uh, but a denial can also have widespread effects. It, it can cause uh, distress and danger really to others. Uh, uh, religious fundamentalists are good examples of this, where, uh, where any uh, priest or spiritual leader preaches hate and causes people to go and kill other people uh, uh, because they they and their parishioners are in denial about the uh, horror of what they're saying uh, is patently destructive. Um, the whole notion of uh, something like uh, Donald Trump's uh, behavior uh, in that his uh, speeches clearly resulted in uh, the destruction uh, that took place at the nation's capital. This all came about as a result of Trump's denial, and I believe it probably was genuine on his part that he had lost the election. I suspect he wasn't just saying that he lost the election to sort of con everybody. I think he probably really believed it. He got himself so worked up and so involved in the uh, notion of winning the election that, that it was just unreal that he lost the election, compounded by the fear that um, as a former president he would be susceptible to a lot of uh, legal action, civil, criminal, and otherwise, as is starting to crank up right now as we speak. Uh, his fear of that uh, was unfaceable, so he went into denial about it. So that had some really widespread effects. And, uh, and so therefore, uh, denial in its extreme form can be really toxic. It's just an awful uh, phenomenon in the community. Okay, well, what's, what's my take on all of this? Well, I've got a little bit more to say on this subject uh, than I usually do in my take because I, I think we've got to try and uh, be constructive about this. I guess my first point would be the simple one that, of course, denial is often a necessary way to cope with, with awful news just to prevent uh, the, the person in question from falling apart emotionally or psychologically. So I accept that... that uh, an, uh, an, uh, an initial <laughs> dose of denial uh, can often be a good thing in terms of just uh, preserving one's well-being. But eventually, uh, you've got to emerge from that. You've got to grow out of it. You've got to get into the real world and, and start treating facts as they really are. And when that doesn't happen, it can be very destructive in all the ways that, that uh, we've talked about above. Uh, denial is a form of lying, really. Uh, it's not being truthful. And uh, as a consequence of that, uh, uh, not only are you being false to others, you're being false to yourself. That's really bad news. Well, how might you tell if you're in denial? Because if you're in denial, you're probably denying that you're in denial. Uh, you're probably reluctant to face up to this. So there are some clues. I mean, for example, uh, if you notice any of the things in yourself that I mentioned 
uh, about uh, you know pretending things are, are not true that obviously are true or that you keep saying that uh, huh, what you're doing is really isn't very important or well you might recognize some of those things uh, in yourself uh, there's some other kind of markers or prompts that might arise uh, you find yourself doing things in secret uh, uh, I don't know sneaking a drink hiding the bottle behind the books in the bookcase uh, uh, snacking when nobody can see you and that kind of thing that, that that's a pretty positive sign that you're in denial or there also could be situations where people tell you that you're in denial oh, maybe you ought to think about whether or not they're they're making sense or not uh, when questioned about it, you make evasive comments like, uh, well, I'm working on that, uh, I'm going to get it sorted out, uh, I, have a, I have a plan for that, when, when in your heart of hearts you know you don't. Um, and then another one is when you uh, refuse to talk about something. Look, uh, that, that's not on the agenda. Uh, my uh, my wife had a former mother-in-law who, when asked a tough question, would just say, "I'm not going to talk about that and change the subject." Well, that's a, that's a form of denial because what she was doing was uh, realizing that she simply wasn't prepared to face whatever the issue was and uh, was in denial about it. Okay, what are some of the things you can do then if you? Uh, start to suspect <laughs> uh, that you're in denial and that that, that may, be, uh, may be causing problems. Uh, well, to begin with, you can, uh, you know, talk to a friend. Say, hey, I, I have this feeling that maybe I am kind of uh, protecting things a little bit too much. Have you noticed that? Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, is it, it, does it concern you? Another good one is to be uh, open and friendly to people who think dramatically differently from what you do, particularly if your denial has to do with deep-seated convictions or beliefs or, or uh, opinions about something. Uh, talk to people who think just the other way around and, and try and keep your cool in the process. Uh, first of all, you might discover, as in the case of these videos, two sides to every question, um, that there are some uh, facts you hadn't really taken note of, uh, that there are some views that are actually themselves pretty uh, impressive and, and uh, uh, plausible and so forth, and, and maybe you ought to uh, uh, alter your view. So all of these things, all of these ideas have to do with just sitting down and being honest with yourself and, and, and taking a look, uh, uh, hypothesizing that maybe you're in denial, thinking about whether any of the uh, areas that you're avoiding, uh, that you're really not confronting, might have damaging effects. It might be damaging relationships with other people and so forth. So that's worth thinking about. Okay, finally I would say, wh why even bother thinking about this? Let's say you've decided that you probably are a, a denier. Why even bother to go to the effort, maybe even the discomfort, maybe even the pain of confronting it? Well, uh, first of all, uh, it may be that in a kind of a Freudian sense, you've buried something very unpleasant uh, and maybe it's time to sit down, uh, uh, relax, take a few deep breaths, and confront it and ask the questions. Uh, that's, of course, the whole basis of Freudian psychotherapy, but in a sense, you can do it yourself. Um, another reason for uh, trying to take action on this is uh, you may be uh, offending uh, your friends, uh, acquaintances, more particularly, you may be uh, kind of uh, coming across as somebody who's dishonest, as a liar, as, as a fantasist, and they'll re lose respect for you. They may be uh, giggling uh, behind your back about some of your views. And, and so, in, in a way, you're a lesser person for continuing in some of these uh, fantasies and, and misrepresentations and, and being untruthful to yourself. 
And then the, finally, the, the, the biggest reason is that uh, beyond the initial point of uh, self-preservation, uh, denial is basically lying. And that's not a good idea. <laughs> it's not, not only has a kind of a, a moral uh, cloud hanging over it, but it's, it's just destructive. So there you go. Those are the things that I've got to say. Unpleasant though they may be, I think it's a really important issue. Uh, it gets in the way of a lot of people's relationships and, and it gets also in, in the way of people's uh, happiness with, with their own lot in life. If you can get rid of deny, you can probably get rid of a lot of baggage that's holding you back. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. There it is, the usual stuff. Uh, give me a like, please comment please subscribe please uh, indicate notification and I'll see you at the next one thanks a lot bye bye